Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Helmets of the World. I'm Mike B, and today we're going to be looking at the Swedish M37-65 steel helmet. So if you haven't seen my other video on the Swedish M37 helmet, I'll try to put the link in the description in the video, and you can check out the main history on the shell development and all that stuff. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the actual shell in this video. <clears throat> we're going to be talking more about the liner system, because it did change. Um... The shell is essentially exactly the same. Um, and in fact, it is exactly the same as the M37. Um, you've got this really cool streamlined design that was pretty revolutionary at the time because most helmets uh, featured something fancy. They're either like an M1 or a um, like Stahlhelm style, but or the, the Brody helmet. And then in 1937, the Swedish came out with this design to replace their Model 26 helmet, which I think I also have another video on. Um, I'll have to go check that, but if I don't, I apologize and I'll make that in the future. But, uh, yeah, this was designed to replace that. Uh, actually quite a few of these, the M37 variants were sent to Finland during the winter war in 1939 and the continuation war from 1940 to 45. And it was a pretty effective design, very compact, sleek. Um, you get a wide range of vision, your hearing is okay, and it still offers a decent amount of protection. I haven't ballistically tested one of these yet, but I'm planning on doing so. Um, possibly, if not this winter, in the summer again, to kind of keep all those videos consistent. But uh, I can't really attest as far as, you know, at the point of making this video, I can't really attest to its ballistic value protection. But I'd assume very small arms, like pistols at like 50 meters, um, fragments possibly, and... Uh, Debris, flying debris, I'm sure it would be fine for that because most steel helmets are good for that stuff. Um, you'll see the the triple crown Swedish crest. That's pretty standard on most of their equipment. I think it still is standard, to be honest. But the ones that I have um, all have these decals on them in varied conditions. So we'll talk about the liner now, right? These are all, the shells are painted gray. Finland actually adopted the same shell with a similar if not the same liner system, in 1962 or somewhere around there. And they called it the Model 62 helmet. And they're painted all of drab. That's usually a great way to tell. I'm sure some of the Swedish ones are painted all of drab as well, but for the most part, they're going to be this gray. Now, there's two variants that I've really seen as far as the uh, M3765. I don't know if it's a transitional thing or whatnot, but this is the typical kind of liner system that you're going to see. You're going to see the webbing or the web chin strap instead of the, the leather one, which I'll show you in a bit, the other variant. And you're going to see kind of this European, looks really Austrian, quick release and uh, regular release buckle. Sorry, my hand was kind of making a shadow. So you hook this up like that, and if it gets pulled on hard enough, it'll just un undo itself. That one's the secured version. So it's got the US M1 style World War II liner with um, an extra, extra strap, which is interesting. A plastic frame, which doesn't seem to actually go through the helmet. It's just um, the, the old bolts, the old rivets where it used to hold the pads on, now bolt onto the suspension system. So um, it appears to be more easily replaceable and stuff. It's really comfortable too, and it's adjustable. This particular size, they, they made them in a couple sizes. This is um, adjustable to, 50 to 55 centimeters to 59 centimeters. Um, I'll show you the other variant really quick that I have. I believe these are the earlier ones because most of the M37 helmets have this style chin strap with the the kind of cork little stoppers right there, the buffers to add more protection. And uh, yeah, this one's a little bit bigger. It's uh, size 57 to 61, as you can see. And essentially, it's got a same the same style design, but it's a different bracket system. This one's actually metal. And it is held on by um, just one like kind of, I think they're welded rivet on the top right there. You see that? It's underneath a foam pad. Because I don't see anything else connecting really anything to the shell like this is a this is obviously a 37 helmet because these rivets you know there would have been a pad there and then a pad here two rivets per pad right on this variant you only see the the one two rivets for the chin strap right there's no rivets for the uh the old pads so this is a pretty cool style i'm not exactly sure if these are worth anymore if these are harder to find but the liner itself the the Suspension system is exactly the same with the sweat band that's adjustable and then the four little um, straps right there. So those are two variants that I've seen. 
Uh, at the time of me making this video, I do have these available in my shop at mikesmilitaria.com. I'll throw the link to these in the description. And um, you can probably get one. They're not that expensive. Uh, they don't cost me a lot. I don't know why. I think they're really cool as far as a collector's piece. And uh, they're just kind of... I, I love the decals. I love any helmets with decals. And most of these have the decals on them. Uh, if they don't have the decals, they'll have remnants of it. Um, some of them just got worn off. But yeah, mainly these are all in good condition. So if you're looking to purchase, you can go check out the link and then check out the description. I won't spend a lot of time on that. So pretty much these were used from about 1965 until the 1990s when I think they also transitioned over to a Kevlar or composite helmet instead of a traditional steel helmet. Just like most NATO countries and um, in the 1990s, they, they transitioned over to that stuff because it would work a little bit better. But uh, yeah, a very historical and really cool helmet. So these were used for a long time. I like them. They're actually, the shell itself is one of the best designs of the 20th century, I think, next to the M33 and the Stahlhelm, of course. I think it's just a really compact, sleek design, and I really kind of, I can't wait to blissfully test one of these. I'll be kind of sad, but um, I think it'll be worth it to sacrifice one just so we can all see what these are actually capable of. So, I have high hopes for them, but I've been crushed before on that. <laughs> so yeah, basically, this is the helmet that was used from the 1960s until the 1990s. So, the Swedish forces used these, uh, the shell itself, since 1937. So that's got a pretty impressive service life. That's uh, that's just about six, yeah, just about sixty years. So, all right. Well, hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. If you got any questions, I'll try to answer them. But it's pretty straightforward. We saw the liner system. As far as being common, they're not super common in the U.S. and they're not like rare or anything. They're not, you know, priceless, which is why I have a big stash of them. I just think they're really cool collectors' pieces, and I like uh, I like the Nordic countries, the Scandinavian countries surplus stuff. I really do. It's very well made. They actually put time and effort into their equipment, which is cool. And uh, I just think it's really unique. And it's its own style, too. Like, it's not really, it doesn't look like it's copied off of anything. Uh, maybe influenced by the M33 a little bit, but anybody can say that because the M33 is a pretty generic design, Italian helmet. But, uh, yeah, it's its own design. And for Sweden and Finland to use this for so long, it must have been okay. So, yeah, I hope you learned something in the video. If you're new to the channel, give this video a thumbs up and then go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more cool educational and sweet videos like this. Um, I love helmets. Helmets are my forte, which is why I have a gigantic playlist of them and I haven't even gone through half of my collection. Uh, yeah, and then if you would consider becoming a supporter on Patreon, the link to that is also in the description. It helps fund the channel so we can go out and actually you know, take one of these helmets out and ballistically test it. That costs money. These helmets are not free. <laughs> and the ammunition's not free and going out there for the day and everything. So that's kind of what, it funds operating costs. I mean, if you don't know what Patreon is, that's what it is. And um, we do polls and stuff on there. We do giveaways, and you guys get exclusive access to content that I don't post on YouTube, or I'll post early on Patreon, so you can be the first to see it and critique it. So that's also a really good option. It's only a dollar a month minimum. Uh, gets you in. Ask the subscribers so far. It's been pretty cool. We've gotten some cool things going. A lot of free stuff given away. So, all right, well, we're done with the shameless plugging. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you on the next video.